this is the final video in the build of this abandoned Japanese shops building. I still have a lot of details to add, so let's get started. First up, I'm adding this partition or whatever it is, cut to length, painted, and glued in place. I did fill the seam between the part and the wall with some drywall filler off camera. Now onto the gutter and connectors for the downspouts. I had originally 3D printed the gutter and connectors as separate parts, but decided to reprint them already connected. Because my Mars 3, 3D printer couldn't print the full length of the gutter, I did have to split it in half. I primed these black off camera. The ends just need a little sanding to fit together better. A bit of CA glue, some weights, and then I got out some BS, baking soda, to strengthen the joint. A bit more CA and a sprinkle of the baking soda. After it dried, I gave the joint a sanding to remove the extra baking soda and hardened CA. I painted this assembly with some brick red paint and then dry brushed over silver. Once dry, I fixed it in place with CA glue and activator. As you can see, the gutter had warped a bit but I straightened it out as I glued it in place. And it turned out great. Next step is the downspouts. I took some styrene rod, warmed it up with a hair dryer, and bent it with my fingers and a pair of flyers some fitting and marking, and another bend. Cut to length, and one more bend with pliers. It took a bit of fit more fiddling with the bend so that it fit properly. More painting with the brick red, which I think on the original building might have been some rust primer perhaps, and gray to represent galvanized metal. A few dabs of CA to glue it into place at the top and the bottom. And a bit of touch up paint again including a black end to simulate the open pipe. Now onto what I think is the best feature of this building, the signboards on each end that have definitely seen better days. In order to capture the weathered wood and delaminated plywood, I again turned to paper printouts. I had to capture some screenshots from Google Street View and then fix them in GIMP. Checking the fit,
and marking the top for a bit of trimming as the angle wasn't quite right. Much better. I want to give it some depth, so I'm going to model the wooden structure behind the plywood with strip wood. Three vertical pieces, and as I didn't have the right thickness of strip wood for the horizontal pieces, I cut thin strips out of some veneer. The end vertical pieces also need a coat of brick red paint. Then I cut a bunch of the horizontal pieces to length. Once the vertical pieces were lined up on the photo, I glued on the horizontal pieces with PVA glue. And then I realized I needed to tape down the vertical pieces as they kept moving on me. I weathered the wood with a gray wash and dried it with a hairdryer. But then I realized it wasn't dark enough so used a, both a sponge and a brush to add a bit more gray. I gave the top a trim and checked the fit. There was one piece I didn't add because of the tape so I added it now. With a fresh blade and my hobby knife, I started to cut out the delaminated plywood from the printed photo. It was well worth the effort. I colored the exposed edges of the paper with a marker and then again with PVA glue I glued on the paper. There were also a few stray bits that were still hanging onto the frame, so I marked the location of those using the printed photo and then glued them in place. I 
Looks good. I'm really happy how this turned out. A bit more touch-up painting as I noticed that the wall in front of the signboard also had this red paint. And then just some touch-up work where the gray paint muted the red paint a bit too much. I now went ahead and weathered the wall a bit, first with crushed pastel chalks, and then I remembered my pan pastels and used that as well to really show the wall's age. Now onto some more vegetation. I took some dried astilba stalks from my garden that I saved years ago from my model railroad, a bit of pruning to get it to the right size, and a coating of hobby tack adhesive. Once that was almost dry and still tacky, I stuck it in a jar of dark green foam. And also poured some foam on and pressed it in place. Yep, that will fit just fine. I added a small piece of foam as there is a piece of foundation on this corner that I missed earlier. And I did a bit more pruning on the tree and found the best orientation for it. I drilled a hole with my hobby knife in the foam base and glued the tree in with some PVA glue. Very nice. One final detail on this end of the building is a small wall that I cut from leftover foam, painted it gray, and glued it in place, supporting it until it dried with some weights. Now I get to repeat the same process with the other end of the building as it also has a signboard, but with one additional feature. Let's go through the process a bit quicker this time.
Now that feature that I mentioned earlier, it's the sign that I think is metal as it has rusted a bit. Again, the easiest way to capture the details on the sign was a printed image. I mounted this on some thin styrene, painted the edges with the red paint again, and glued it in place. The added thickness from the styrene helps to give this a bit of depth. Really happy with the result. Once the signboard was glued in place, I added these foundation blocks again from gray painted pieces of foam. I added one more piece of horizontal wood at the bottom. And on to the next detail. I cut a slice from a styrene pipe that is hollow. I also cut some spacers from styrene sheet and glued them with styrene cement to the end of a thinner styrene rod. I then added a band of gray paint and proceeded to use some more BS and CA to strengthen the pond. After drilling another hole in the foam, I glued it in place. Another detail on this end of the building is a water tap, likely for watering plants and such. I cut a square strip of styrene to length drilled a small hole and glued in a piece of solder as it was just the right thickness and was easy to bend to make the end of the spout. I added this folded up thin styrene strip for the valve on top and glued it in place and cut it short. A bit of paint to make the post look like stone. And some thick silver paint to give the faucet some more body. Glued it in place with CA and it's looking really good. I painted some thin strips of styrene brown to look like wood. These needed a couple of coats as I didn't use any primer. And they were fitted, cut to length, and glued to the undersides of the ends of both sides of the roof. I painted this matchstick brown, cut it to length, angled the pieces, and glued them in place on the underside of the roof as rafters sticking out. They also got some paint touch up. If you remember from the last video of the diorama base build, I had these two extra plates left over that I mounted on styrene. 
These were now glued into their final resting place. I bent another styrene rod for the other downspout pipe. And again I painted it and installed it. One other detail I wanted to capture is a round junction box. I used my hole puncher again to punch out three discs. One I cut down the middle and made it a little bit narrower. These were then sandwiched together with styrene glue with the cut pieces in the middle to create some holes on both sides. And a bit of grey paint again. Using a paint stick where you can stick the small pieces to is handy. I painted a few pieces of magnet wire grey. I stuck the junction box into one end of the wire I had installed much earlier and the new wire into the other end of the box and stuck it in place on the building. And the other wire was attached to the electric meter on the wall and glued into place. Very fiddly work. One final detail on the side and that is this electrical device that looks like another meter but I don't really understand why it is there. I drilled a hole in the 3D printed part. Stuck in a thicker wire and painted it gray. This was hung on the side of the building to sway in the breeze. I noticed one more plate on the end of the building. This one is round, so I cut a round piece from the leftover printouts of the rectangular plates. This was again glued to some styrene and cut out again, and in hindsight I should have glued it on first and then cut the two out together. The usual edge treatment with a brown marker and then it was glued in place. I 3D printed this diorama nameplate with raised lettering. 
In order to easily paint the raised lettering and leave the white background, I used a scrap piece of foam, painted it brown with a brush, and then while the paint was still wet, pressed it lightly on the sign like a stamp pad. I repeated this one more time to get darker letters. However, it is designed to not be a fully solid covering as I wanted that aged look. I then glued on the nameplate with some adhesive caulk. Weighing it down overnight. A bit more paint on the side to darken the concrete. I used both a sponge and a paintbrush with some granite colored acrylic paint. And then I did a bit of wet weathering on the edge of the building foundation as well. Now the final detail delayed the finish of this diorama for a week as I tried to figure out how to model it. I searched online for the right scale vegetation and didn't have much luck. And I also tried to model it with thin paper strips, but I ended up going to my stash of static grass tufts just to get this project done. It may not be exactly like the original vegetation, but it will have to do. Progress over perfection is my new motto, otherwise I'll never get anything done. As you can see here, it was a simple matter of gluing these down with some PVA glue. I also glued one on top of the others to get some more height. And that finished the project. Overall it was an enjoyable project with some frustrations and a lot of procrastination. Considering I started back in January of this year, taking almost nine months on one diorama is not great as I have so many other ideas for some really cool dioramas. But I'm glad it's finally done. I love the history this building hints at and the mystery of why these shops were abandoned especially on a street that has other shops and lots of traffic. And here is a comparison with a photo I took back in November 2022 in Japan that inspired this diorama project. I would say I managed to get about 80 to 90% accurate to the original building. It now sits on a corner shelf in my home office. I hope you enjoyed this series of build videos. For the next diorama, I hope to do just one build video and I hope I can finish it in one week. Stay tuned for that.